Hello, and thank you for tuning in to NL Now on Canada Superstation and TV. Stay with us for the next half hour for some music and fun surprises. Yeah. Hmm. Hello, folks, and welcome back to NL Now on NTV. My name is Gary Weaselton, and as for every week, I am your host. This morning on the show, we have two wonderful guests. In the interview chair, I'll be speaking with the chair of hospitality, Newfoundland and Labrador, and well-known restaurant owner, Brenda O'Reilly. And on our musical guest set, we've had him here on NL Now a few times, and he seems to be a fan favorite. We have the wonderful Larry Foley performing for us. But before we get to that, I wanted to speak a little bit about and remind you about the NL Now Productions YouTube channel. And there you'll find all sorts of fun stuff like our past episodes and previews for future episodes and some special online exclusives. So go check that out at YouTube NL Now Productions. Let's get right into things now. Please welcome to the NL Now Musical Guest Soundstage, Larry Foley.
Welcome back to NL Now on NTV. Here for you now, we have a very special performance from one of our own cast members here at NL Now. Please welcome with Joan Morrissey's The Mobile Goat, NL Now's very own Maureen. story of the mobile goat on the grand old southern shore in the lovely isle of newfoundland where goats don't roam no more it's about a man named dylan whose cursing was of note and how he was digging for spots one day when he spoke to the mobile goat now that goat had been stealing digging spots for 20 years or more and every time he saw him dylan cursed and raged and swore he was digging hard in his field this time the goat was chewing away near a great big six foot granite rock well dylan heard him say are you digging them dylan are you digging them deep are you piling them dylan in a nice big heap oh i'm digging them says dylan not enough to fill a boat but I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten, stinking goat. But I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten, stinking goat. Now Dylan got afraid of his life when he knew just what took place. And he said, good Lord, to the devil himself, come to snatch me from your grace. Come to take me for my sacrilege and my rotten life of sin. And he ran like mad down the hill to home, and the goat just pitched right in. But they say it was the priest just passing by when he heard old Dylan curse. On the goat and the spuds and the Lord above were making all things worse. Just to hush the roars at heaven's above, he thought he'd bid good day. And as he passed the garden fence, the good priest he did say, Are you digging them, Dylan? Are you digging them deep? Are you piling them, Dylan, in a nice big heap? Oh, I'm digging them, says Dylan. Got enough to fill me both. But I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten, stinking goat. I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten, stinking goat. You could never tell Dylan to the priest who spoke to stop his cursing spree. Passing quietly behind that rock so Dylan couldn't see. And to this day in Mobile, on that grand old southern shore, there's a thousand who believe the goat spoke out when Dylan swore. Are you digging them, Dylan? Are you digging them deep? Are you piling them, Dylan, in a nice big heap? Oh, I'm digging them, says Dylan. Got enough to but I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten stinking goat. But I'd be digging them more if it wasn't for you, you rotten stinking goat. Welcome back to NL Now on NTV. We will hear a little more from today's musical guest, Larry Foley, later on in the show. But for now, I'm here with our interview guest. She's the owner of some very successful restaurants, downtown St. John's, and the new chair of Hospitality NL. Please welcome Brenda O'Reilly. How are you doing today, Brenda? Fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Yes, it's great to have you here. So I want to start off by asking you about your uh, new position with Hospitality NL. Maybe just explain to our viewers exactly what it is and what your role is with them. Well, I'm the chair of the board, mm -hmm. and it's been almost a year now, yeah. uh, but it is a two-year term. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually was the vice chair, and, and uh, the chair resigned during the uh, 2020, mm -hmm. so I stepped up and, and took over. 
Yeah, so it's um, basically, it, you know, I chair the board and uh, we meet regularly. And then, of course, I'm the spokesperson for the industry. Right. So uh, the tourism industry, I guess you could say it's uh, recovering now after a big hit from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, what are some of the things that you think we need to see happen here in the provincial and I guess even on the municipal and federal levels as well to help us get back on our feet? Yeah, well, the pandemic certainly hurt the tourism industry mm -hmm. all over the world. And of course, you know, here in Newfoundland Labrador, we're no different. Yeah. And of course, you know, we've we've always had trouble with access to the province, uh, lack of available flights. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're most of the uh, most of the province is an island. And, uh, you know, we rely on Marine Atlantic to get us to and fro as well. So, yeah, I mean, um, we we. You know, we need. Uh, we had a hard time with the pandemic. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about it. Our industry was the first hit, the hardest hit, and it's going to take the longest to come back. So it's going to be. We're in for a few more years of rebounding. We'll say. Yes. Now it's not only the tourism industry that struggled throughout the pandemic, but you would know, of course, as the owner and operator of Yellow Belly and O'Reilly's and Muscles on the Corner, how challenging it's been running a restaurant through this pandemic. So, what are some of the biggest challenges you guys faced? Well, you're right. Staff, uh, staffing, keeping our staff has been our hardest part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of the pandemic, people lost confidence in the industry, and I can understand why. Um, you know, and so as we started to reopen again, we found ourselves very short staffed. And a lot of people have either left our sector or moved on to other uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our new... Um, I guess our biggest issue right now is trying to staff up our locations yeah. and um, yeah but musicians were hit hard too yes. and uh, of course as you know I own O'Reilly's so O'Reilly's is uh, a live music venue and supports live music seven nights a week mm -hmm. and you know we end up going from full bands to duos and single acts and uh, I don't think a drummer had a gig for a year no. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway but uh, you know it's starting to come back we put live music in as quickly as we could yes. uh, as a matter of fact uh, Muscles in the Corner closing during the pandemic and we, mm -hmm. we've reopen the new restaurant called Frugal Steins in okay. the same location. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. So uh, what are some of your favorite things now about running a restaurant? Oh, it's never the same day twice. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a passion uh, career. Um, those of us who love it, love it for lots of reasons. It's not necessarily very lucrative, mm -hmm. um, but it is absolutely, if you're, if you're passionate about, about it, it gets in your blood. Yeah. Um, it's never the same day twice. It's exciting to create stuff that people, to see if people like it and then kind of like, you know, um, change it and correct it and yeah. fix it along the way just to make sure you're appealing to people. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very, it's, it's very rewarding from, from a satisfaction perspective. Yeah. Now, uh, Brenda, since we had you on our show last, you've actually started a TV show of your own. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? Yeah, it's called Scoff Off, and mm -hmm. it's a lighthearted cooking competition yeah. show where we take two people who are sort of like like-minded, mm -hmm. uh, either competitors or siblings or in the same industry or the right. like, and we give them a secret basket of ingredients, and they have to cook something for me, and I pick a winner. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, so that's great. I've seen and you've had some of the same guests we've had on here and some other Well, great Larry, people. as a matter of fact. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Now, where did the idea come from to start Scoff Off? Uh, you know, it came from uh, Jane, who used to work at Rogers. It okay. was an idea she came up with. Mm -hmm. um, I had pitched a different uh, show, mm -hmm. and uh, so I guess out of it all, this is the one we came up with, right. and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yes. It's meant to be light and, and fun, and it's not about cooking. If I wanted to be mm -hmm. really about cooking, yes. I'd have all chefs on there, right? Okay. <laughs> So uh, what's next for you, Brenda? Do you have anything new coming up that you can tell us about? Yeah, well, we opened up something in Harbour Grace this past summer, mm -hmm. and uh, we bought the courthouse out there and the jail cells, right. and so we opened up something out there. Yeah. And, of course, we bought the cathedral. So we're working on our, mm -hmm. our project out there. We're hoping to open up a, a regional uh, tourism uh, project out there uh, with a hotel and a spa yeah. and a brewery and distillery and uh, yeah, a destination-based uh, yes. uh, thing. So now we're going to do a little thing I like to play with all of my guests. It's called Get to Know Me. So I'll ask you five questions and you'll come back with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Your favorite color? Red. Your favorite food? Pizza. Hmm. Your favorite thing to do on a day off? So? Mm-hmm. And your favorite thing about living in Newfoundland? Freedom. Mm-hmm. Well, that all sounds great, Brenda. Thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back after this short commercial break with more from Larry Foley.
Welcome back to NL Now. I am here on our musical guest set today with Larry Foley. How are you doing today, Larry? How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, too. So it's been a little while since we had you on the show, so why don't you start by telling our viewers what you've been up to? Well, before I do that, let mm -hmm. me say that you haven't aged a bit. I don't, oh, know, what, I don't know what your secret is. But well, thank you, Larry. I'd like to, I'd like to know what it is. Yes. Uh, what have I been up to? Well, you know, with everything going on in the world... Um, had a fair bit of downtime over the last year or so, obviously. Mm -hmm. And when you play guitar and sing songs for a living, you know, there's actually an advantage to that where you get to think about it a little bit and work on a few ideas. And that song I played earlier was one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, just a song about being from here. And sometimes we feel yeah. like we're out at the, the end of the earth, you know, in Newfoundland. And uh, that song just came from that, hmm. pretty much. Now, like you said, I know that during the pandemic, there was a lot of downtime. And uh, I know you did a few shows online on like Facebook Live and such. So, But how has it been being able to transition back into doing those real in-person shows? Um, I would think that my online shows helped my live show mm -hmm. when I went back to it. Um, during the first lockdown, I didn't really do much of anything other than just veg out and just try to process. But the second time around, God love her, my wife convinced me. She said, Larry, go out in your studio and play music for the people because mm -hmm. that's what you do. And I was so glad she encouraged me to do it. And I, I, I forged new relationships. I found a new, uh, a new kind of passion for playing, mm -hmm. doing it online. Uh, because there are many concerts, right? You know, when you're when you're playing live venues, people are not always get you're not always getting everyone's undivided attention. Yes. But when you're playing online, it's you know I, f I found it's like almost being under the microscope. And I, f I found that microscope. I found that really good for me when I went back playing live to just I don't know after all these years doing it just to be more engaged with the audience. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember the first time maybe that you picked up a guitar and thought to yourself that music was something you wanted to pursue? Um, I'm pretty sure I was uh, like the song. I was baby. I was born this way. Um, you know, I was that kid with the tennis racket um, when I was little. So they say uh, I used to have a stomp and Tom impersonation. <laughs> like when I was like four before I even went to school. So I always seemed to have a guitar going around with the, by the neck. You know, mm -hmm. um, one time I broke one off. I decided I'd slide down the coffee table on it. That didn't work out so good. Cracked it right in half. <laughs> but I, I, I just think I just think I was born with it. I, I really do. Now I'm that, that I'm this age, <clears throat> I'm 30, uh, looking back on that, that I think I was just, just born to do it, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, I didn't start playing for real until later on, until like I was right. in my teen years. But yes. yeah. Now, over the years, you've performed a very long list of songs, of course. But does any song stand out in your mind as a favorite to perform? I think, oh boy, that's a good question. It, you know what? It changes from time to time. Yes. Every now and then, I'll find I'll have a song maybe that uh, I've known for all my life, mm -hmm. and then just start playing it. Right. And all of a sudden, that becomes my new favorite song. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think it's whatever new material you're working in. Certainly, if you write something that you really like, which rarely happens with me, but uh, again, the one I did earlier, I, I found that one struck a chord. Just pardon the pun with me. Yes. And, you know, so it, it varies. I don't think you can zone in on just one. Like, mm -hmm. I might have a favorite Beatles song to play or a favorite Ryan's Fancy song to play, that kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know, because I'm a big fan of, of all of our, our own music from yes. here in our own province. And then you have your favorite bands out in the world, too, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting to be caught in the middle. So it's a hard yeah. question to answer, Gary, man. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, Larry, it's been so much fun having you on the show today. It's uh, always great having you in. I love being here, man. It's great mm -hmm. to see you. Also, thank you to our friends at Music NL for their support, as well as Ron Ellsworth. Now, here to close out our show, please welcome once again, Larry Foley. I like to rest my heavy head tonight on the bed of Atlantic stars have Have it wash over me and the wind and the sun will greet me with a brand new day, a brand new day. I want to feel your warm hand in mine as we walk beneath the 
Atlantic sky like we did when we were young down at the water's edge beneath those Atlantic stars So good night Good night to you, my love, underneath those Atlantic stars and a wish upon each one that this is where we'll end our day. Beneath those Atlantic stars, I want to rest my heavy head tonight on a bed of Atlantic stars and a wish upon each one that this is where we'll end our day. Those Atlantic stars. All right. Thank you all for joining us here this morning on NL Now. Come back to NTV next Saturday at 1030 for another all-new exciting edition with some brand new special guests. See you there.